Welcome to Patch Notes, everyone, the weekly gaming news roundup where we look at the biggest stories throughout the week. Let's get into it. If you thought the RTX 3090 was expensive, wait till you hear what Nvidia themselves just bought. ARM, the global dominator in mobile computing and CPU production, has just been acquired by Nvidia for 40 billion USD. While you may be aware of NVIDIA's large market share in the graphics card department, they also have majorly invested and researched in AI technology. While the press release did sound like something out of a Skynet presentation, they talked about the promise of AI technology in the future and how it will affect both computing and the internet. NVIDIA did confirm that ARM will continue to operate its open licensing model while maintaining the global customer neutrality that has been foundational to its success, which is really good to hear. The company seemed kind of like a match made in heaven, and it will be very interesting to see if anything they explore leaks its way into gaming or console development. A little but fun project by C Wang 22 shows the current price to buy every single item on Steam at the current moment. The program pulls daily prices, showing how much everything is with sales and without. So at the time of this writing, for example, it cost $528,074 to buy everything with sales, but $541,250 without sales. So if money is no object and you want to flood your Steam library with games you'll never play, you can find out how much it will run you. Borderlands 3 will be making its way to next-gen consoles with some new features. Two-player vertical split-screen is coming to next and current gen, while three- and four-player split-screen will be available on PS5, Series X, and Series S. 4K 60fps in the single-player mode will be exclusive to the PS5 and Series X. As a side note, Crossplay will also be joining this feature list. While I personally won't explore the next-gen version of this game as I play on PC, it's definitely worth checking out if you haven't already and you're a Borderlands fan. We talked last week that Sega had some big plans for Sonic's 30th, and they have now shared some of those endeavors. These are only the first wave of merchandise and collaborations for the Blue Hedgehog's anniversary and include some interesting products. One in particular, the Sonic Encyclo Pedia La will be a sort of parallel to the Hyrule Historia, both published by Dark Horse Comics. It explores nearly every video game and provides deep insights into the Sonic franchise. Collectible figures, items, pins, jewelry, apparel, comics, and even a G Fuel peach flavor are also on the way. Now all we need is some games, so hopefully we'll have some of those coming soon as well. After announcing that next-gen versions of Control would not be a free upgrade, 505 Games seem to have stumbled over themselves a little this week. It started when some owners of Control's Digital Deluxe Edition got upgraded to the Ultimate Edition for free on their PS4s. And of course, there's no such thing as free content, so it was quickly reverted, but it also proved that the upgrades were possible when previously 505 Games said it was not that simple, that the next-gen enhancements was just not possible as a, a simple update. It was then later discovered that Control Ultimate Edition was actually just a bundle, so it had the game, its DLCs, and those next-gen enhancements as a separate part of said bundle. So 505 Games is basically locking next-gen upgrades behind another full-priced paywall. Not a good move from 505, and hopefully they'll change their minds and at least make the enhancements available as a standalone purchase for current control owners, as they deserve that much at least. It seems Microsoft's affordable next-gen offering will not be running Xbox One X backwards compatibility improvements. So rather, the Xbox One S versions of said games will run on the Series S. Microsoft had this to say about running these sorts of games on the Series S, to deliver the highest quality backwards compatible experience consistent with the developer's original intent, the Xbox Series S runs the Xbox One S version of backwards compatible games while applying improved texture filtering, higher and more consistent frame rates, faster load times, and auto HDR. This sort of makes sense, seeing as the Series S is the kind of budget-friendly console, we can't expect it to do it all, but at least there will be some improvements. If you wanted to know what box to look out for regarding Microsoft Series X and S, here they are in all their retail glory. It shouldn't be too hard to tell them apart at the counter, as one is all white and one is all black. But knowing out-of-touch parents, though, they'll hold up the line, trying to comprehend the differences between the two, only to end up purchasing the cheaper one because it's cheaper. Nothing against wanting to learn more about your purchases, but maybe just do it before checking out and, like, not at the pay counter when we're all standing in line trying to get our consoles. 
please. Now that xCloud has finally launched, Microsoft is changing the way it adds games to Game Pass. These are the latest additions to the subscription service, but you can see here, they now specify what games are going to console, PC, and the new edition, Android, which represents the cloud game streaming. Destiny 2, Shadowkeep, and Warhammer 2 Vermintide are coming to Android and console. Night in the Woods is making its way to Android console and PC. Halo 3 ODST will be going to Android and PC this month as part of the Master Chief Collection. And Company of Heroes 2 Complete Edition is going exclusively to PC. The first custom switch we have seen in a while was revealed for the European, Australian, and New Zealand markets. And of course, it's a it's a freaking Fortnite edition, man. Coming in at $469.95 Australian dollars, you get a custom Switch, dock, and Joy-Cons, all themed after some of Fortnite's more iconic imagery. The blue and yellow Joy-Cons match up to the Wildcat bundle, which includes skins, V-Bucks, and Fortnite pre-installed on the console itself. This releases in Europe on October 30th, and Australia and New Zealand on November 6th, if you're interested. I just feel like we should have gotten some Mario 30th anniversary console as well, but you know, COVID. If you're a Doom fan, you're going to want to tune in here. Doom 64 is getting a physical edition, which looks really cool. For $54.99 USD, you'll get Doom 64 physically for Switch, a poster, a booklet, a classic N64 game box, and a non-functioning N64 cartridge with the little Doom logo on it and all of that. This collection looks just really fun and seems like a must-have for any die-hard Doom collectors. Pre-orders will go live September 25th at 10 a.m. Eastern over on Limited Run Games. Some more retro games are making their way to the NES and SNES online services. Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy Kong's Quest, Super Mario Picross, and The Peacekeepers are the three new SNES titles. SCAT Special Cybernetic Attack Team is the only new NES edition, and these will all be available on September 23rd. To wrap Nintendo up, let's take a look at their latest Direct Mini Partner Showcase, which was actually pretty good in comparison to the other ones they had. Some more notable announcements include not one, but two new Monster Hunter titles. Monster Hunter Rise, a mashup of concepts from both world and older entries in the franchise for the Switch. It's everything you love about Monster Hunter, with new movement options, environments, monsters, and even dog mounts. The game will launch on March 26th, 2021 next to some cool looking amiibo figures and there's a whole direct on nintendo's youtube channel dedicated to the game monster hunter stories 2 was also announced not too many details were shared about this one but we do know it's coming out in the summer of next year and it will please fans of the prior entry and rpg fans in general these two games both stories 2 and rise will have some compatibility on the switch maybe like reading save files and getting items but again they said further details will be coming later at the end of the presentation, Xbox Game Studios and Nintendo shadow dropped Ori and the Will of the Wisps. While it's been out on PC and Xbox for a little while now, it finally joins the first entry on the hybrid console. They also put up this beautiful collector's edition for both games and it looks very cool. If you get the pack, you get both games physically with their own case. This transforming kind of display box, which releases the contents and it also has a glow in the dark finish. You get some artwork, these custom designed field guides, some collectible cards, a sketchbook with some never before seen concept art, a pin, and digital soundtracks for both games. It will be coming out in December and you can pre-order it over on I Am 8-Bit's website. GameIndustry.biz got to speak with Mike Blank, a EA SVP, about a rather drastic change EA is making when it comes to PC gaming. EA is basically ditching the Origin branding altogether. So we talked about how they're changing Origin Access, being renamed to EA Play, and now it's the entire Origin game launcher and storefront, which is getting changed to the EA desktop app. I definitely think the new name's a little basic, but it's just another step in a long line of changes EA has been making this past year. Blank has this to say on the move, to create a more frictionless, fast, social-oriented experience for our players, where it becomes the best place for them to connect with the people they want to play within the games they want to play. He also mentioned that all the changes EA has been making focus on player choice, prioritizing cross-platform play, and breaking down barriers to EA games. So I guess for all the bad EA does, this is something every company selling digital games could learn from. Talking to you, Epic.
Hey, speaking of Epic, Rocket League announced its free-to-play launch, which means this is your last chance to get the game on Steam before it's pulled from that digital storefront forever. Cross-platform progression will kick in, including being able to link to your Epic Games account, along with the legacy content mentioned a couple weeks back for players who bought the game originally before it's going free-to-play. These updates went live this week, but the free-to-play update will be going fully live on September 23rd. AMD gave us the first look at one of the new RDNA 2 graphics cards. The 6000 series card, which we'll zoom in on here, has three fans with this black, silver, and red color scheme. Two 8-pin power connectors can be spotted towards the top, so hopefully these new cards will be a little beefier and can kind of compete with that RTX 30 line. In the most random of places, you can view a full 3D model of the card in Fortnite with this creator code. But uh, yeah, I'm not showing that here. I'm not 11, I'm 12. Thank you. GameStop will be having some trade-in deals for the pre-order of a Series X or S. Trading in some current gen consoles will get you a nice little credit towards the next gen boxes. I think the most notable one here is getting a hundred bucks for that original Xbox One, like the, the, the big chunky one that came out all the way back 2013. There are definitely not a lot of people who are gonna pay that much for one of those. So, you know, guaranteed hundred bucks towards a Series X or S, if that's on your mind, might be a good option for you. Sony had a lot happen over the past couple of days. So let's start with that PS5 game showcase, which was really fun. It showed a lot of cool games, Final Fantasy 16, Demon's Souls, Hogwarts Legacy, the next teaser for another God of War, and even a new FNAF game made an appearance. That one I was not expecting. The 40 minute presentation is up on YouTube with all the individual trailers up by now as well. Many of the games from it are worth your time, so definitely check them out. There is some really cool stuff in there. Sony also decided to just drop the price and the release date on us as well for the PS5. You can see here, the all digital PS5 is priced at $399.99 USD, and the disc version of the PS5 is available for $499.99 USD. So it's that expected $100 price gap that everyone was kind of guessing. Both will be launching on November 12th in the US, Japan, Canada, Mexico, Australia, New Zealand, and South Korea. Both versions come a week later, November 19th, to the rest of the world. Here you can see the launch games for the PS5, which include Astro's Playroom, Demon's Souls, Destruction All-Stars, Spider-Man Miles Morales, and Sackboy A Big Adventure. Definitely worth noting that Demon's Souls and Destruction All-Stars will have a $70 USD launch price as compared to the standard $59.99. Sony did confirm that their first party developers would be looking to price future releases between 50 and 70 bucks. Sony also announced the PlayStation Plus collection, a selection of 18 generation defining games that will be available to PS Plus subscribers on day one of their time on the PS5. Here's the whole list with some notable PS4 titles from Sony's third party developers and even a couple of third party additions. On top of this, Jim Ryan also confirmed that 99% of PS4 games would be basically backwards compatible with the PS5, but these 18 seem to be specifically optimized to play on the next gen device. It's good both non-members and subscribers will have some access to a nice backlog of PS4 games, you know, so even if they haven't bought anything for the new console on day one, they'll still have something to play. And then the pre-order situation started and it was bad like really bad pre-orders went up all over the place with different retailers at different times and it sold out basically everywhere let's just say sony has created a hype machine so big no one trying to buy a ps5 is safe from broken websites sold out signs and other purchasing issues if you are trying to get sony's next gen console this holiday season i got two words for you good luck it will be a worthwhile struggle got a couple of major releases this week Splunky 2 on PS4, Hades on Switch and PC, The Long Dark on Switch, Ori and the Will of the Wisps on Switch, WWE 2K Battlegrounds on PS4, Xbox One, Switch and PC, Crisis Remastered on PS4, Xbox One and PC, and lastly, the collection we've all been waiting for, Super Mario 3D All-Stars on Switch. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below about this week's news. 
So now we got both consoles, their release dates, their specs, and their prices. The only question is, which one are you getting? I was able to pre-order a PS5 from Amazon, as I feel the game is just more appealing as compared to Microsoft stuff I can play on my PC. Let me know what you want. One console, which one, the Xbox, the PS5, or may maybe you're getting both. Let me know if you are getting both, let me know why. Also, that latest Direct Mini didn't seem so terrible now that the Mario stuff has finally been announced and we're past it. So Nintendo's starting to get this 2021 lineup ready to go, and there's some interesting stuff here. I'm really excited for Monster Hunter, that looks really fun. I'm really happy Ori's here, because I know a lot of people enjoy those games, and I'm sure they'll have a couple other games joining that third-party lineup for next year as well. If you liked the video, make sure to hit the like button, it really helps out. But if you didn't, leave a dislike and tell me what you think I could be doing better. I'm always looking for more ways to make gaming news a little more enjoyable for y'all. If you want to see more, make sure to get subscribed and hit the bell to get notified of new uploads. As always, I'm your host Wingo Dang, and I'll see you next Friday.